Okay. Uh, essentially, I want to wrap up our discussions about essential biodiversity variables. I think you've seen most of this, but I really want to kind of give a little bit of more of a, of a wrap up because I think there's, a, there's a, a continuous message through it that we ought to touch on. So I'll give you a copy of this paper. The title is Essential Biodiversity Variables <coughs> Are Not Global. Okay, this is by me and a, a colleague named Jorge Soberon. Um, and again, this is mostly repeating things that we've already talked about, but I think it's worth repeating just, just one more time in spite of Aaron's objections. So you remember the, the six classes of, of essential biodiversity variables. And what I want to do is show you a map of each one of them, well, of four of the six of them. You've seen between uh, Ben's two talks yesterday, you've seen that with those two, there's actually some potential for developing global scale maps in a relatively short amount of time. Okay, the potential is there. It may not be doable right now, for example, with the LIDAR data, but it's possible. But I want you to take a look at five manifestations of the other four EBVs. And so what we've done is we've gone to the source or the biggest source for each one of these. We've mined out their data and found some way to map their data. Okay? Some of it is aggregated by country. Some of it is smoothed. It's, it's a variety of methods and so it's mostly visual. But I just want you to see this. I already showed you this map of genetic composition. Um, essentially, these are data mined out of GenBank. And then uh, we've scanned through the uh, location field for matches to the names of the 200-some countries around the world. And that's the, what, what the world looks like. Essentially, it's Europe, China, India, North America as the dominant uh, foci, Australia, to some degree Brazil, but you can see a lot of South America and a lot of Africa and Central Asia and the Middle East are relatively empty. Here are data on species populations, another of the EBVs. You can see the sources, especially comadre and compadre, and what you see again is North America, Australia, Europe, and then everything in the middle, that kind of diagonal stripe across the world, if you look at things in a, in a Mercator non-projection, um, is relatively less populated by data. Species traits, Aaron to told you about the tri data set. And here what you see is that Africa is particularly um, absent along with the Middle East and, and Central Asia. We're going to go on to data specifically on community composition. So these are data that a community ecologist would say is community composition. And they're basically a big uh, North America and maybe European and Australian bias. And then if we say, okay, forget about data specifically on community composition, but rather just data on distributions of species, we can look at GBIF and get this paper, uh, sorry, this view. And so what we did was then to pile all of this into a principal components analysis and come out with essentially the major axes of variation amongst countries worldwide as far as a view across all four or five of those uh, views of e essential biodiversity variables, and we get this. And so essentially this is the main tendency across all of those variables, and you see exactly the same pattern. You know, essentially there's this, this diagonal that cuts across the earth, which is a gap of information, okay? Or a relative dearth of information. Obviously, there is information there, but it's relatively poorer in information. 
And so I, I think that really points out that it's not just, oh, we don't have much information here about one thing. It's an uphill battle on many fronts. And so that may mean that a lot of you need to focus attention and energy at the data gathering, data capture, uh, data enabling level before you can get to the things that you may be more interested in. Okay? So just to sum up with EBVs, two of them can be summarized worldwide quickly and easily, fairly easily. The remaining ones take enormous and maybe impossible amounts of uh, resources and time. Those remaining EBVs are biased towards the global north and they probably will forever be biased. And so it's just the comment that as you or if you ever end up you know, counseling the Minister of the Environment or something like that, these discussions of policy and implementation and, and such, when these international discussions take place, they really have to be taken with a big grain of salt, a lump of salt, because they're based on information that is dominantly from the global north and not very much from a region like Africa. So it's just, it's just reality. Over your careers, you're going to see that begin to change. But I don't know whether the rate of increase of information in the global north may essentially always increase along with it. I don't know. It would be wonderful if that gap could close. That depends on, I think, activity and initiative from within Africa and from within those other regions that are essentially left out of this picture. <laughs>